Let's see how close I get here. So all I'll do is basically like a whip stitch, except we wind a thread around the needle. And when you pull the thread in, it locks it in place. So it won't separate. But a lot of people don't realize that most of it is done by hand. And the amount of time it takes, you know, they, they send in a pair of boots and they think, okay, next day I'll get them back. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that well. And um, you have to sew it blind. I have to sew it from the inside out without looking to see where anything is. That, that's the hardest to learn. You get in there, take your needle and push it up against the straight all and you can feel it. That's where you start. There's no automated process in this entire workshop. And I call it a workshop and not a factory because there's, there's no automation. You know, it's not an assembly line. Each of the boots that we make are, are very unique, very special, uh, and they're poised for a lifetime of use. I can't say enough about the, the people that do make them or have made them over the years and how, how what kind of craftsmen they really are and how it's produced because it isn't just a throwaway tennis shoe. Moxie construction is one of the oldest forms of footwear because it's, it's what Native Americans, what Eskimos, it's what they all made their footwear out of because it's very simple. It's very durable because you don't have any weak points on the bottom of the foot where it's actually touching the ground. So what we developed here at Russell in the early days in 1898, it's a waterproofing layer. The way that we create water resistance is by staggering the seams on the interior and exterior layers so that it, it reduces the penetration of water through the boot. So it became the boot of expeditionaries, people who were going all over the world to do incredible journeys and trips. Charles Lindbergh, the famous pilot, on several of his flights when he was working for Lockheed was wearing Russell Moccasins and that pair is now in the Smithsonian, the National Museum of Air and Space. Robert Rourke in the 1950s, a uh, famous writer and safari goer, was wearing them in Africa. Uh, President Eisenhower wore those as his hunting boots for people who were going to very difficult terrains and environments where they had to have uh, a technical footwear. It was the technical footwear of the day. Uh, and that design aspects that made it so durable in those times is, is part of the reason why we've been able to survive 125 years in the same town. I'm an outdoors person. I really do like that, and that's why I got away from the city. So if you like being in the outdoors, it's just a place to be. That's what I love about it. You're right in the center of a lot of different trails. We got the prairies, we got lakes, we got hills. The area in itself is gorgeous. Wisconsin has a great heritage of, of sportsmanship and people who love the outdoors. Uh, it's a very outdoor-centric state. Um, being here in Berlin, Wisconsin, the reason that we've tried to keep things here as much as possible, uh, investing in this community is we believe that ultimately that heritage is what makes it special, but it's also what's going to ensure that we last another 125 years. And so you never know what unique products you might find in a small town or uh, a county like Green Lake. I think a lot of people are getting to the point now where you see the waste and the consumption of our society and the point that we've gotten where uh, in, in our minds uh, footwear is not supposed to last very long, two, three years maybe at most, and then we throw it in the trash and, and get another pair. By making a product of such high quality that's designed to be sustainable, designed to be maintainable so that you can repair and, and keep that product in service for as long as possible, that we can make the best of those materials and ensure they're not being wasted. So a pair of Russells typically is going to last 20, 30. Uh, I've got a pair from my great grandfather that were from the 1940s that are still in use. I think shoes are very important. Uh, they're literally your cars, your tires that take you places, hold your weight. That's one of the things that I like, making practical boots that have uh, withstood the test of time. It's not only an act of making an excellent product, it's also an act of conservation in the way that we make that product. We have so many stories of people who pass down their shoes to their kids and grandkids, and as long as somebody has a similar foot size, typically they want to wear that pair of shoes too. In order to do something like this, it can't just be about money or about those sorts of things. It's got to be a passion. Uh, everybody that's here, you know, the reason they stay so long, the reason that they're so loyal and that we've got such a great team is because everybody here is passionate about what we do. 
What makes us is the people in the shop, not us. You know, we're here, but they, they are the true craftsmen and the artists of, of the shop. You take a snake boot, that is, it's a tall boot, and it's hand sewn all the way around. A shoemaker could, pro a good shoemaker could maybe make two pair a day, because there's more work to it. I'm uh, doing inspection. I, after the boots are done and gone through the line, they come to me and I just make sure that they look good and for the customers and get them ready to ship out in boxes. It allows me to really take pride in my work. It's not quantity, it's quality. And most of my other jobs, being a big guy, it's always lift heavy stuff. But then here's take your time. I just really like it. It makes me love my job that much more. As you look around here, we've got a very diverse workforce and a lot of our craftsmen have been here for 30, 40, sometimes 50 years. I started out as you know, molding soles, and from that I went to uh, sewing, sewing the seams. And they needed somebody for uh, cutting, so I went down to cut for a few years, about 10, 12 years. And then I, somebody, they needed somebody back here, and well the problem is here, you can't just hire someone off the street. You have to know how it's put together in order to fix it. It's like a car. You can't just take somebody off the street and say, here, fix this. If you don't know how it's put together, you can't fix it people that work in this workshop, uh, as, as humble as it seems, uh, is a, they're professionals. And so um, we're excited to have that team and continue to build that going forward because it's so important for us to have. And the only way that you can do that is have people who are willing to get their hands dirty and get in the process. When you have a design that works well, um, that has a high degree of durability. There's certain things that you don't need to change because ultimately that's why people come to Russell Moccasin is to get something that you can't get anywhere else. It's a piece of living history.